Hi, my name is Jenny Thorvaldson. I'm the Chief Economist and Director of Data Development at Implan. And today I'm going to talk to you about multipliers. Again, we have a couple other videos uh, about multipliers where we uh, talk about what multipliers are, the different types of multipliers, the cautions when reporting multipliers and interpreting multipliers, what the size of various types of multipliers should be, uh, the data that go into them, things like that. Uh, but today I'm going to get into the nitty gritty and we're actually going to uh, take a close look at the multiplier calculation, the equation for calculating multipliers. And we're actually going to calculate multipliers ourselves in Excel and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So I have just a couple of slides uh, to describe what we're going to do and then we'll go to into Excel and actually do it. So I'll go ahead and share my screen now and start a presentation. And as I said, we're going to um, calculate multipliers today. So we have to start by discussing the multiplier equation. And to start doing that, we're going to first define uh, a few matrices and the symbols that we use to represent those matrices. OK, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the uh, a matrix of industry outputs. So we'll call that X. And that's actually going to be a vector because, um, which is basically one column or one row, a matrix of one column or one row is a vector. And we just have the output values of all the industries in a region in that uh, vector matrix. And then we have um, an actual matrix that um, is the size of it is industry by industry. So depending on the number of industries you have, we'll have industries listed across the top so that each column represents an, um, an industry. And then we'll have each of those same industries listed along the sides so that each row also represents an industry. So, um, and the reason we have it this size and shape is that this matrix, which we're calling II or symbolizing with II, is the matrix that represents intermediate input expenditures, which is basically what industries buy from other industries. And those are dollar values as well. So for example, in column one, we'll have industry one. And along all the rows is how much industry one purchases from all the other industries um, as inputs into creating its own output, its own products. So it'll pr purchase a certain dollar amount from its own industry. That happens a lot. From industry two, from industry three, it might not purchase any, and there could be a zero in there, industry four, and so on. Then we have a matrix of final demand. So final demand um, are purchases from industries by what we call institutions, so things that aren't industries. So we here we would have uh, government purchases, uh, household purchasing, uh, inventory, things that go into inventory, and then we also have exports, things that get exported out of the region. That's another final demand. So those are users, um, those institutions buy for things from industries, they buy industry output, but they don't use them as inputs into making something new. They just use it as is, as a final demand. Okay. And then finally, I'm not adding uh, any additional data, but a new matrix that just is kind of uh, a mix of two of the other matrices is the A matrix, also known as the direct requirements matrix. And all this matrix does is it divides all the industry intermediate inputs by each of each industry's own total output value. And so all it's doing is it's taking those dollar value intermediate inputs and putting them on a per dollar of industry output uh, basis. So it's just turning them, instead of having dollar values, we now have proportions of a dollar. So basically, per for every dollar of my industry's output, how much am I spending on industry three as one of my inputs? And so, for example, if industry one has $100 of output and it spends $3 on 
um, industry too, well then that would be a coefficient of 0 0.03 um, in the cell that is column one and row three. Um, industry one's purchase of row three, when we put it on a per dollar of industry one's output basis or a um, direct requirements basis would be 0 0.03. So now they're not dollars anymore, they're, um, they're just kind of like percentages um, per dollar of output. And you'll see why we need that in a, little, in a little bit here. It all comes clearer as we put it all together. Um, another thing that'll be uh, important for our use will just be to note that since the A matrix is the II matrix divided by the X matrix, you could also just rearrange that and say that the A matrix times the X matrix, so direct requirements times output, gives you back your intermediate expenditures. So remember the A matrix is just percentages basically, it's per dollar of output. So what are my input purchases per dollar of my industry's output? If you multiply that by, your, by the industry's output, then the II, the intermediate media input expenditures in dollar terms gets returned to you. And again, this will all make sense when we talk about the output equation next and, and what, um, what this means for us. Okay, so when we put it all together, industry output serves as an input either to other industries or to meet final demand. Okay, so every industry's output has to go somewhere. It either goes to intermediate inputs of other industries or goes to final demand. So households buy it and government buys it or we're exporting it. Or if, if not all the goods are sold, um, it could go into inventory. But inventory is also final demand, so it's represented there. So between intermediate inputs and final demand, all of our output is going somewhere, one of those two places. So this is just a simple equation that tells you that industry output is going to whatever it goes to um, to serve as inputs to other industries and whatever goes towards serving uh, final demand. And some of those two things will give you back your industry output. Okay, well, if you remember from the previous slide toward the bottom, the last thing we had said was that AX equals II. So that direct requirements, A matrix, if you multiply it by all the industry outputs, then you get back all the industry um, intermediate inputs. So let's use that, now that we know that AX equals II, let's put AX into this equation here. So now we have these two equations that I have here, both say the same thing. They are both, they're all the same numbers. It's just that II is now being represented by two different matrices that multiplied together gives you II. And, you'll, and so what is cool about this is then we can isolate X, and this is where things start to get more powerful. So um, we're gonna subtract AX from both sides, so we get X, all our X's on one side, and if you remember your high school algebra, and then your algebra, and then we'll factor out X, so we just have one X, um, and so by doing that, we have now X times one minus A equals final demand. And then to get X by itself on that one side, we'll divide both sides by one minus A. Now, if this were just linear algebra and we were just talking about one equation instead of matrices here, um, you really would divide both sides by one minus A. But since these are matrices and you don't really divide matrices, instead you multiply by a the inverse of the matrix. And that's basically the same thing as dividing by it. It's just in matrix uh, algebra, this is how you have to do it. So instead of having final demand divided by the one minus A matrix, we have final demand times the inverse of the one minus A matrix. And one other thing to point out, if this were again, just one sim single equation, um, instead of matrices, that one really would be the number one, the digit one. But in this case, it's actually a matrix of um, that has ones all along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And that's called the identity matrix. And so it's usually represented by the letter I. I just left the number one here. Okay, so what's the big deal? Who cares about this equation? Well, it gets... Um, here's where we're going to talk about how we use this multiplier equation. Okay, so this is 
This is still just a form of that output equation. We just rearranged, we substituted some things in and we rearranged things. So all it is telling you is the relationship between industry outputs and what industries buy as inputs and what final demanders buy from industries. So interactions between industries and industries, interactions between institutions and industries, and that all tells us how um, output is created or where output goes, where industry output goes. So that's fine, and that's just telling you how this works in your economy um, in a given year, fine. But where it gets powerful is when we look at changes of things. So if I just add these um, change or delta um, icons here, these triangles, where this becomes powerful is that we can now look at a change in final demand. So say uh, we think that our exports from the region of grains is going to increase for a certain re reason, or households are going to decrease their purchases of milk for some reason. Whatever change in final demand that we want to analyze, we can put this in that change in final demand into this equation, and we'll get back the change changes in outputs of all the industries in our region that would be associated associated with or result from or be necessary for um, or to meet this change in final demand in certain of certain commodities or industries. So this part um, on the right hand side of this equation is what we call the multiplier matrix. And that's where it's really powerful. We can multiply that multiplier matrix by whatever change in final demand that we want to analyze, and voila, we get impact results. We get changes in outputs of all the industries in the region that would be necessary or associated with um, this change in final demand. And this is essentially what multiplier models do, like implant. Okay? So just a couple important notes about this before we move on to the spreadsheet and I show you how to do it. So the previous example is for type one multipliers. Um, and that just means that we're only including industry, industry interactions in that A matrix. But if we wanted to include household spending as well in that multiplier matrix, then those are gonna be type SAM multipliers, which are the standard nowadays. Most people use SAM multipliers that is the default and implant although you can see both types there. Um, government spending could also be included, but that's it's typically not because it's not really justifiable in most cases. We do have an article about internalizing government on our support website if you want to um, read more about that at support.implan.com. Also, it's important to note that the A matrix represents only local purchases by local businesses and households. So imports and commuter income are leakages uh, and um, other leakages include taxes, profits, and savings. So those are all things that don't generate more impacts um, when you're using these multiplier models. Okay, well let's now head into our spreadsheet example. And uh, I'm going to pull up my spreadsheet here. And don't get intimidated by this. I'm going to walk you through um, where I got all these numbers and what all these things represent. And then we're going to hop on to the next uh, sheet where I've emptied things out and we're going to calculate them together. Okay, so in the top here, we just have the SAM, which is the social accounting matrix. This is basically the picture of the economy that is in your IO model. Of course, this is a very simplified one. We have just 10 sectors. Uh, I have labor income and households. I don't have government or anything else in here uh, just to keep it very simple. So this is just the picture of the economy. We can see what um, industry one purchases from all the other industries. As I go down column one, what it pays in labor income and what its total output is and so on for all the industries. Now, as I mentioned, to get the A matrix, all we're doing is putting it on a per dollar output basis. So I'm just dividing each of industry one's purchases by industry one's total output, and so on for each of the industries and each of their input purchases. We're just dividing each of these dollar values in the matrix up above by the total output of that column. 
Um, and that's just putting these on co a coefficient basis. And as you can see, they all sum to one for every industry, okay? I talked about the identity matrix. Here it is. It doesn't involve any calculations. It's just putting the number one on diagonals and zeros everywhere else. So it doesn't need to be calculated. It just needs to be there. Then to get the I minus A matrix, we're subtracting this I matrix, this identity matrix. Or excuse me, we're subtracting the A matrix from the identity matrix. So we have I minus A, and that gives us our I minus A. And um, that's pretty simple matter, although um, when you're doing these, you're not just doing it one cell at a time, we're doing it the whole matrix at a time. So we're gonna be using the matrix math functionality of Excel, and I'll show you in the next, when we do it together, I'll show you how to do that. Then we have to invert that matrix. So this guy right here is our I minus A inverse. So this thing that I have highlighted here is the inverse of the matrix right above it. And as I um, mentioned to you, this inverse is our multipliers matrix. So each of the values in here is a detailed multiplier. Uh, so basically this one um, right here that I have highlighted is saying this is the multiplier effect that industry one has on industry two. So these are detailed multipliers. Uh, most folks are interested in the summary multipliers, which is the sum of an industry's multiplier effect on all the other industries. So right here, we can see that industry one's summary output multiplier is 3.31. And all these other industries, they have their summary multipliers hovering around somewhere in, in the two range. And then we have one um, industry that has uh, an, multiplier of less than two. Now these are all made up numbers at this point. Um, you can watch our other multiplier videos where we talk about what affects the size of a multiplier. And a little hint, it's not the size of the industry uh, that affects the size of its multiplier. Okay, so let's move on to the next tab and let's do this ourselves. So here we have the SAM again. These are the exact same values that I had before. To get the A matrix, we don't have to use um, matrix algebra to do this part. This is the only one where we can just do it cell by cell. So I'm gonna divide that input purchase by that in industry's total output. I'm gonna put a little dollar sign in here so that uh, I keep dividing by the same thing. And we'll just drag and drop our equation over and down. And hopefully all of our columns sum to one. Sure enough, they do. Beautiful. Identity matrix is just there. We don't have to do anything with it. And the I minus A matrix. Now this is involving matrix algebra. So we need to, uh, we can't just highlight one cell and put a formula in it. We need to highlight the entire matrix. And then we'll put in our, we'll type in our formula. We'll say equals. And then I want it to be this whole matrix. So I highlight this whole matrix minus this whole matrix. So I'll highlight this whole matrix. And then instead of just hitting enter, like you would when putting in a formula for a single cell, when doing matrix algebra in Excel, you have to hit control shift enter. And hopefully that has filled our matrix. Oh, it sure has, wonderful. So there's our I minus A matrix. Now to invert that, do something similar. You highlight the matrix you're gonna fill. Then you put in, type in your formula. And we're gonna use the functionality in Excel called M inverse for matrix inverse. So M inverse, open parentheses, highlight the matrix you'd like to inverse, close parentheses, and then again, don't just hit enter, hit control, shift, enter, and voila. <laughs> there are our detailed uh, multipliers. And then at the bottom, we've, uh, we have our sums across industries to get our in total uh, summary multipliers for each industry. And there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and hope to see you in the next one. Bye now.